Learn how HPE solutions in combination with SQL Server 2025 are unlocking edge to cloud for your AI mission critical apps. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, welcome to Data Exposed. Let's get right into it. Today, I'm joined by our friends at HPE, as well as DJ Data, who's been on the show before. Um, DJ Data, SQL Server 2025 is packed with exciting new features in the AI, AI space and other areas as well. I'd love to just kick it off with a little bit of context for what we're going to do with HPE. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Yeah, happy to be back on the show. As, as you said, SQL Server 2025 is packed with features that will help our developers build agentic AI and rack pattern AI applications. Uh, it's, it has great features that can also give you enterprise grade applications to run your mission critical data with efficiency, with smooth integration, with Azure, as well as on-premises. And this is where our partnership, Anna, with HP really starts excelling. Uh, because we have worked with HP throughout 2025 to make sure that when SQL Server 2025 is out and our developers and DBA customers are using it, they get a great platform from HPE to run their applications, their agent to AI applications. With 2025, as we know, AI applications based on rack patterns have been simplified to build with the native vector support, advanced vector indexing, vector embeddings, enhancements that we have made to T-SQL, uh, better indexing. Uh, HPE has worked on developing a hybrid cloud AI platform that supports these AI-driven applications, which was shown by um, Matthew, who will be talking to us next at HPE Discover. SQL Server has outstanding new features on enterprise grade to boost the database engine's storage efficiency and performance and availability, such as accelerated database recovery uh, with asynchronous page request batching, backup compression, to name a few, binary optimized vector, and better TempDB performance. So there's a ton of features. I'm just telling you a few of them and more. And HP's latest Aletra storage platform, which Mike is going to discuss from the storage uh, team from HPE, has been tested to give you a robust solution for analytics and mission critical workloads. And additionally, if you looked at our TPC benchmarks, HPE has worked with us consistently to deliver industry leading performance, topping the TPC benchmarks year after year uh, so that our customers get the highest quality of mission critical workloads running on, on the best of platforms. And that's where Wendy, who has been working us, with us for many years, will be talking to us of, about what's exciting from HP as we get ready to, to launch SQL Server 2025. Awesome, great. It seems like so much stuff is happening and the partnership with HP is just continuing to grow. I think, you know, let's get right into it. So I'm going to bring uh, Matthew up from HP to kind of talk to us about uh, Agentic AI and what that means in the hybrid cloud space. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, as DJ mentioned, it's it's really about that partnership, and when you really are able to to work closely together to to uncover new opportunities to to show customers how to use data in, in a in a more useful and impactful way. And one of the things that we did from an HPE perspective is we we launched an edge based server or, or something that would be in a remote location wherever that may be, and that was the DL one forty five, a uh, high efficiency, low power consumer uh, device that allows you to have GPU. So you can have, you know, an H100 in there or an L140, an L40 or an L40S from NVIDIA uh, doing uh, an inference capabilities. But then, then came along SQL Server 25 with this vector search capabilities. And a quick overlay for that, if you haven't seen Bob Ward's uh, presentations on it, I'm now going to go and take those uh, vector hashtags from a from a model, and I'm going to imply that directly as a column to my data that's already in SQL Server. And as we all know, it is a major repository, SQL Server, for all kinds of machine customer data, functional data, business data that's already there. We don't have to pull it out and move it somewhere else. That repository is already available to us, especially at the edge. If you're looking at retail or uh, offsite drilling organizations, I can now enable natural language search against that engine, use it to fine tune, 
those models to be able to go and help drive additional things. So what we did with our demo architecture is we really focused in on, okay, how would you go and do this in a simplistic way? And we actually had the opportunity to, to, to use both Windows and Linux in this space with SQL Server 25. But we used Azure Local, created a cluster out of the DL uh, 145s, and we used some very primary or very custom uh, customary found uh, technologies in the uh, in the AI space. We used Llama. Uh, we used REST as part of the SQL Server 25 uh, capabilities, and we used the OpenAI functions to be able to create those models to run the agentic agents, to be able to go and drive them. And some of the ones that we built were shelf inventory. So now you start looking at how you're looking at from a retail perspective, what's going on? Well, I have my inventory system that's already there. I can already look at how I'm going to order that information. Now I can build an automated engine with the Gentic AI to go and manage that shelf inventory and automatically do the restocking for us. I can look at the restocking alerts and have those generate and trigger different functions that are there. I can also look at reordering. Maybe you need to change suppliers in midstream because of a tariff function that's been applied or a tariff function that's been rolled out. You can actually build that function to go in and do that automation to look that up and find out what that pricing structure is and be able to do that because it's tied to your business data and your business rules. And then you have the flexibility of deployment, again, with Azure Local and tying it back into Azure Arc, into the larger uh, Azure Cloud systems, or whether they're uh, on-premise or uh, hybrid cloud uh, deployments, you'll have the ability to access that SQL Server data wherever it is and be able to apply it to your business processes for the best possible outcome. One of the things I really thought was really uh, powerful here was the fact that we're using REST. It allows me to focus on security, locking down controls in that, and being able to maintain standards compliance across a lot of different tool sets. But allowed me a lot of functionality to go and start pinging specific things and using tools such as NIM or Triton for inferencing and being able to add in additional GPU functionality and still be able to maintain security across the, the, the landscape that, that was there. Uh, again, it was a great set of tools and it was a great demo that that we have running at, uh, at Discover, but it just kind of scratched the surface of what we can do with automation when it comes to agentic functions and agentic AI. Awesome, cool, I love to hear it. And I love to see you know, how these solutions that you guys are building on top of HP DL 145 are taking advantage of the latest capabilities that have landed in SQL Server 2025. So it's awesome to see that. Um, I'd love to see this example one day, maybe in a future episode. Um, with that being said, like I'd love to understand like how customers are receiving this, what they're thinking about this, and how we're kind of able to meet them where they are in their journey. And maybe, Wendy, you could help us with this question. Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, as Matthew was talking about, um, HPE has a range of architectures. Um, he really focused on our ability to meet customers at the edge, which is fabulous. Um, but many customers also have mission critical demands. And whether they want their data source um, hosted in Azure or in their own data center, we can really meet them where they are. And in specific, uh, we actually at the high end have a scale up architecture. And as DJ alluded to, uh, last year, we were able to, together working with the Microsoft and HPE engineering teams, we were able to do the first ever 100 terabyte non-clustered TPCH uh, with uh, our Superdome Flex product in Windows Server 2022. So that was a super exciting milestone and it really gives customers the confidence for these large workloads that they have in the back end that we can together help to scale. And just, just so people know, it will support both AMD and, and Intel architectures. Um, and uh, this is based on some unique in-memory technology and you know, SQL Server loves memory. And so um, our particular architecture really helps to support that. So like basically with this solution, they're able to consume a lot more memory for their really big servers or databases without taking the performance hit. And, you know, it can be run all, you know, within the machine and the device. Uh, you got it. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank, thanks, Wendy. I think, you know, this is actually a really interesting episode because we have so many people who are chiming in with like why it's so great. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to bring on Mike, uh, when he talked to us about how, you know, we're meeting customers, uh, where they are, Mike, I thought maybe you could talk to us a little bit more about the database engine improvements and how HPE storage platform can take advantage of those. Yeah, hey, I'll definitely chime in. <clears throat> and, uh, as, um, it was alluded to we actually work with Microsoft, um, and, my, and SQL server in particular across a lot of different. Uh, solutions. And so, you know, Wendy really talked about the Pentultimate uh, mission critical scale up stuff we do. We do entry level as well. 
Uh, but the thing that DJ wanted me to point out is when we were at Discover, I was talking about how we're really, uh, especially with SQL Server 2025, really trying to put really more of a hybrid cloud uh, and really focus and accentuate the hybrid cloud capabilities that we can bring out. And at the end of the day, we're like the plumbing guys, right? So it's like, how can we enable all these cool things going on above us as like Matthew talked about you know, the application and the database layer. And so this really, this chart just kind of shows, and I guess if we started the left-hand side, really more of the traditional stack. So SQL Server running with our, what has been up to just recently, our, um, uh, like traditional, so the B10,000 really has been a block storage system with the latest um, R5 release that's now a unified block and file. So it has some limited file capabilities, but that's really kind of our core storage platform. And so you can see, you know, SQL Server running on that. A couple of different ways to connect. Um, I think DJ may have talked, you know, called about, uh, talked out about the, uh, some uh, native functionality in SQL Server 2025, like, you know, database mirroring, but also we've shown in our lab just how simple it is to just do Arc Enable. So Arc Enable, a Windows Server environment, have SQL Server or whatever running above it, be able to use that to connect back to an Azure environment. So we're enabling that. Uh, and then the other side of the chart is also a even newer platform. So the X10,000, and uh, this is an object store. And uh, it was actually a little while ago, we we're like dropping uh, Bob Ward's names, but we're, uh, we're enabling, we're kind of working with him on a, um, a demo. And it was really Azure SQL connecting to just some S3 um, you know, compliant object store. Didn't quite have our X10,000 quite ready for that one yet, um, but now we do. And this really would check the box for just um, S3 compliant bucket. You could use this uh, for you know, any sort of um, you know, unstructured data. And in this, Looking at this holistically, then you can really see where this could be an on-prem environment. We have traditional SQL Server instance going, and you can then connect to some unstructured data. And the cool thing with SQL Server 2025, you have uh, even more efficient ways to do that, whether it's like Parquet, Delta, CSV, you don't have to use Polybase, and you could be managing all this data estate and then have you know, a number of different ways, as I kind of mentioned, be able to connect to your uh, Azure environment. So that's how the plumbing guys are making um, you know, some of the cool capabilities work with SQL Server 2025. Wow, absolutely. Yeah, it's really kind of unlocking the mm -hmm. infrastructure and the insights across, you know, wherever you are, which mm -hmm. is a, a great hybrid edge story. So thanks so much, uh, Mike. Um, wow, I've learned a lot in this episode. I'm going to bring all our wonderful uh, friends from HPE as well as our classic DJ data back on stage. Um, Wendy and rest of team, if you want to chime in, my last question for you guys is like, when are these solutions available? Are they available today? And do you have any tips or tricks for folks as they get started with this? Um, yes, so when SQL Server GAs, um, customers will want to make sure um, that the platform that they're interested in has either the appropriate Windows or Linux certification. So on the HPE website, we have a matrix um, that customers can check um, that out. And then also, too, we have many technical resources available on hpe.com, technical white papers, solution briefs. Um, so we encourage customers to go to our site and, and search for SQL Server and come up with a host of resources. So we are super pumped for the upcoming launch. Awesome. Great. We're pumped, too. I can't wait for SQL Server 2025 to GA. Uh, if you're watching this episode, be sure to check because depending on when you're viewing it and when we publish it, SQL Server 2025 may be GA. So just take a look out for that. We'll keep uh, an updated link in the description. If you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment and let us know what you're going to use this for. Uh, we'll put all these links in the description so you can learn more about these solutions. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.